Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. The first and sweetest harvest of the year is well underway. As sugar makers turn sap into syrup, scientists at UVM's Proctor Maple Research Center are conducting a study on red maple. While not as sweet as the sap from sugar maples, red maples do produce sap and can be tapped for production. And after that, it's anyone's guess about the quantity and quality of the sap until now. Across the Fence spoke with the lead researcher to find out how it's all sugaring off. Really, any species of Acer in the genus Acer, so any species of maple, can be used for maple syrup production if the temperature and climate are right. Um, and one species that we have an abundant amount of all across the maple producing region is red maple. Plenty of producers use red maple as crop trees for maple production, along with their sugar maples, if they have them growing in the stands that they tap for maple production. Um, but there are some sort of holdover barriers to some producers really feeling comfortable adding or using red maple as a crop tree. Um, and so what we're trying to do with this project is to actually collect some data, some real empirical scientific data to dispel some of those, what we almost like to call myths about red maple to make producers more comfortable and confident to use them as crop trees uh, because they provide, uh, using them as a crop tree provides so many different potential benefits for forests, for maple producers uh, on multiple different levels. How are you collecting this data? One area that we're focusing on is with respect to yield. So the sugar content in red maple sap tends to be a little bit lower than in sugar maple, the sap in sugar maple. Historically speaking, it, before we added technologies like reverse osmosis to maple production, which is used to remove a lot of the water from sap before it gets to the evaporator, collecting red maple sap for syrup production could actually be a pretty inefficient process. So there was lots more water to remove and many producers um, actually just wouldn't include that as a crop species because of the, basically the amount of fuel that it re would require to make syrup out of that. And in part because of that lower sap sugar concentration, there is a thought or sort of almost a feeling that red maples produce less syrup overall than sugar maple. Um, but most of the producers that use red maple as crop trees pretty much know that the yields end up being about the same as sugar maple. So they tend to have lower sap sugar concentration, but they produce way more sap. So at the end of the season, it tends to be about the same overall syrup yield as sugar maple. But the problem is, we don't, at least up to now, we didn't have any hard scientific data to prove that that was true. So one of the objectives of this project is to actually quantify the actual yields from red maples when using modern sap collection practices like high levels of vacuum, really good sanitation and things like that. So hopefully we will have some good numbers to document that the yields from red maple are pretty much the same, if not identical, to sugar maple. Would a consumer be able to tell the difference between syrup from a red maple as opposed to syrup from a sugar maple? Well, that is an excellent question and actually segues into the second part of this study. So one of the other perpet uh, perpetuated myths about or think ways of thinking about red maple is that somehow the flavor of syrup they produce is either different or inferior or that perhaps they make that late season buddy off flavor earlier than red maples. Um, and there's actually zero data to support any of that. And certainly again, we have this case where lots of sugar makers who are using red maple as crop trees already are like, you know, they have the experience that they don't see a difference or any impact on flavor. But without the hard data to support that, it's really hard to say, oh yeah, it's perfectly fine. What we're gonna do, and this will be next year um, that we'll do this study, we're actually doing a um, controlled side-by-side -side experiment in which we have 
sap collected from purely red maples and purely sugar maples in the same stand. And we will process that sap into syrup simultaneously in our processing research facility, and then do the subsequent sensory analyses to see is there a detectable difference in the flavor of syrup made with red maple and sugar maple sap so that we will have some kind of, again, scientific data to support what we already really believe is true. <laughs> so there's a, probably a good chance that we've had red maple sap mixed in with our, our, our regular maple syrup and just didn't know it. Oh, more than 100% chance. Wait, that's impossible. It, <laughs> for certain that you have had syrup that's been made with red maple sap, but we certainly, we tap in a, a lot of red maples at Proctor. So, and lots of producer use, producers use them as crop trees. So you've definitely had red maple syrup for <laughs> sure. How did you get interested in this? What was the scientific uh, interest that you had in this? One of the big draws to it is that it's just one of those things that is not known and we really do need to have some hard data behind it. Red maple, because it is so adaptable to, di to different sites and growing conditions, it is actually one of the species that we look to for the future as we have a warming climate and things are changing in the maple producing region as things become less favorable or conditions become less favorable for sugar maple, red maple is likely to be a very, very important crop species for maple production in the future. We need to know as much as possible about red maple, both its yield as well as the flavor that it makes, uh, because it will be a, definitely a very important crop species for the maple industry to adapt and mitigate against climate change for the future. Our thanks to Abby for all her great work. Moving now from cutting edge maple research to sugaring the old fashioned way. One of the most popular stories we've aired in the last few years was about the Patty family of West Enosburg. In this family, everyone sugars. While sugar making is a time for family, the Patties take their work seriously and have been recognized for the high quality of syrup they produce. Here's Keith Silva. Charles Patty, call him Bill, everyone else does, follows a simple philosophy to make maple syrup. Work hard, keep it clean, and enjoy it. Maybe Bill missed his calling as a poet. Ask him about his business, and it turns out he's as wise as he is humble. Oh, it's just a family sugar run up, sugaring operation. We uh, tap 2,000 buckets, gather with a boulders and a set of horses. Other than that, it's kind of like Grandpa did, right? Patty has spent his life farming and sugaring, but it wasn't until he built the sugar house that he and his family decided to go into the maple business for themselves. We built this sugar house in 2001. Prior to that, I sugared pretty much boiled for someone or boiled ourselves way back as a kid with my grandfather and father and pretty much something we've done forever. We didn't have a tractor when I was a kid on the farm, so we did everything with horses. So. Do you miss those days? Mm, don't miss the horses. <laughs> I like horses though, because they buy hay. <laughs> Patty's lack of nostalgia for the old days of sugaring stops at horses. The family still gathers sap in buckets instead of using a more modern pipeline system. Lucky for the Patties, they've got a willing and eager workforce made up of their grandsons Dylan, Colby, and Brendan, and a neighbor, Tyler. With us at our, our size, it's fun to gather, the family gathers, it's a good time out there until till the days that you have to gather just with two, and then it's not as much fun. The boys, the young boys get all excited about it. They can't wait to get started. Of course, they can't wait to finish when we get towards the end either, but. Uh, what about the older boy? Me? I'm getting older, <laughs> yeah. No, it's fun, it's, it's, we still like it. As long as everybody sticks together, we still will keep doing it, so. The boys have built homemade rigs out in back of the sugar house. They've got a competition going to see who can make the most syrup the old fashioned way using a kettle over an open flame. While things heat up outside, inside the sap bubbles away in the pans. Like the buckets, there's not much modernization in this sugar house. Wood, not propane, fires the evaporator. And there are no efficiency increasing devices like a reverse osmosis system 
or a preheater pan that are commonplace in most maple operations nowadays. This is how the patty sugar, it works for them. When we bought the new sugar rig, my son and I wanted to put a preheater pan in the back and the wife said no. If we're going to sugar, we're going to have steam in the sugar house. So that's how it stayed and that's how we've been ever since. And we've made some good syrup with it, so we're just sticking with it. It's a big expense. The RO's a lot of money and you've got to have the building to store the RO in to keep it heated. And like I said, it's just a family project that we enjoy doing it and doing it this way. No need to spend that extra money to have fun. Not done. Been good. A sugar maker is both scientist and artist. Technology boosts efficiency and increases profits, but the process of making maple syrup is only the means to an end. The product is what matters most. Mark Isselhar works as a maple specialist for University of Vermont Extension. The small operations, ones that might use buckets, are really important to the, the, the image, the marketing of maple, because a lot of times the, the story of maple is told with this older technique of collection. It's not so much the process as it is the product that's critical. Making sure high quality product across the board is what's important. The patties have placed first twice and were awarded best in show in 2010 by the North American Maple Syrup Council, an international organization made up of 16 states in Canada. Bill's proud of the awards he and his family have won. It probably won't come as a surprise that accolades and prizes aren't why he's a sugar maker. What do you like about this time of year? Summer's coming. <laughs> no, no, it's a lot of fun. It's the last thing you do before, you know, the winter's over and it's just fun to be out there doing it, making some good syrup. We had the land, we had the maple trees, so we just, just wanted to do it for the kids. It's like Bill says, work hard, keep it clean, and enjoy. It's how the Patty family makes maple and lives life. In Enosburg Falls, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. And that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.